do like a little icebreaker thing. So in terms of, you know, passing these cards around, I might just pick one, ask you all a question, whoever wants to hop in, answer it, you know, see how it goes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All types of questions from serious, serious mm -hmm. therapy, like put you in your therapy bag questions oh, to, you know, your black car <laughs> revoke joints. So <laughs> I'll start with an easy one. If anybody gets this wrong, I, there might be somebody that take a shot or something. <laughs> okay. All right, answer the question. If fish don't fry in the kitchen, then beans don't burn on the grill. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. I saw all y'all just pull up for a second. I'm like, don't do this. Don't do it. So feel free. You want to pick a different one? That's cool too. Cool. Oh, okay. This is a good. This is a good one. Which TV mom do you wish was your own? Claire Huxtable, Harriet Winslow, Aunt Viv, Mama Payne. I don't know. Mama OG Light Skin or Old Skin? Like, old yeah, skin. which, which one? <laughs> OG Aunt Viv. OG Aunt yes. Viv. Yes. OG Aunt Skin Aunt Viv was a little, little soft. Yeah. yeah. It's just because, yeah. like, they put her in there as, like, well, here's a new mom. Like, wait a minute. Who, yeah. Where did she yeah. come from? Why does she look yeah. nothing like the, yeah. the OG? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like a fucked up stepmom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Colorism. <laughs> Colorism is real. It's so real. Um, it's so real. I think my mom is Claire Huxtable. Yes. I think the socio script she used for mothering mm. is directly from the Cosby Show. Mm. Some of the art that we have in our house is directly from the Cosby Show. Mm -hmm. So I think Claire Huxtable is my answer. Was it who young. do you want or who is your mom? What was the question? It says, do which do you want? Okay. Do you want? Wish was your okay. Right. I'm not going to wish against my mother. <laughs> that's, that's, that's fair. That's fair. What's something your mama told you to do that she can do herself? Oof. A, take the chicken out. <laughs> B, turn the light out. <laughs> C, watch her kids. Or D, go to the store. Ooh. Once you said A and B, I was like, all the above. Like, yeah, right. yeah. The chicken out is definitely one thing that all of our parents like didn't really need, like they could have done that before they left work. <laughs> they they tried to put it on us. They were to do that yes. before they left work. They could they put that shit on us though. Like, wait a minute, you left. Chicken you on the taken it out. Come on, chicken don't fall between 3.30 sure. and 5. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. 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 It's, it's just, just don't. It's like half the hours. Don't. Take your hours. Yeah, that's the only time. And that then you, when you hear like them the coming in the door, the Nigger. keys jingling. You'd be like, oh shit, I didn't do it. But my mom was like, if you defrost the chicken in the microwave, like you were going to get sick. Like that was always her thing. And it's just like, but if we let it sit out all day, we not. Like, you, can't, no you, can't, you can't question the logic. Yeah. No. Disrespect. No, absolutely Disrespectful. Not. See, I'm spoiled. I never had to do anything. So no. <laughs> this is like, what chicken? Yeah, it's already made. Right. Gotta do what? That affected me in a lot of ways later on, but it was what it was then. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta do what? Oh, no. Okay. All right. Q's music, <clears throat> whose music got worse after they changed this their life? Okay. okay. A, Gucci Mane. B, Mary J. Blige, <laughs> C, Mace, or D, Donnie McClurkin. We what? fall down. I would say, <laughs> it pains me to say because I love, I love Mary, but yes. <laughs> it just didn't get right. as hard once it was beautiful. Like, it was like, okay, this is nice, but I'm gonna go back to like, what's the 411? Yeah. I'm gonna go back to my life. Yeah. But what's the excuse now? Because it's not beautiful anymore. And the music is still not good. I mean, okay, so, you know what? But you know, I, I wasn't gonna go, go there. No, no, yeah. like, okay. But you know what? We're not gonna do. <laughs> like we're not getting. No comment. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Mary, I stand with you. I yeah. can't speak for Felix. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what his uh, affiliation I think, I think is. My answer was pretty obvious. It was it's Mary J. Blige. Mary J. It's yeah. Mary J. Blige. Although I will say, like, early Mary J. And Mary J. You know, probably mm, she has her own troubles. Mary J. Blige. Right. Mm -hmm. It is a little more like. I do feel it more in my hip hop heart, but like no more drama. If you're going through some drama, listen. Man, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And watching her performance Man. is like transcendent, Ooh, just, right? Yeah. You know? Let it go. But I do like the anti dance on Just Fine. Like the thigh high yeah. boots and anti dance, that's, yeah. a, that's a vibe too. Not gonna lie. Mary's, not Mary's, classic, just, Mary's time. It's not, okay. Way. Oh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly not on your playlist. I was like, yeah, no, she's that's one such of my a good favorites. song. She's one of my favorites. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get a little deep now. We're gonna okay. Transition slightly. We can bring it back to some light shit, though. What gets in the way of you asking for help? Damn. It's deep and light, though. Because okay. I feel like we can all relate to that one. Mm. That's a good question. I think for me, it's like mm -hmm. being seen in maybe, being seen as somebody who I don't know what I'm doing. Like, oh, this nigga asking for help. Like, mm -hmm. Or being seen as like unintelligent. Mm -hmm. Even though it's all fear, it's all fear-based. But mm -hmm. I think that probably gets in the way. Interesting. And like, 
kind of like an ego thing of like somebody walking me through something. It's like, damn, I have to really sit in this. I, I don't have the knowledge. I got to humble myself a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I think some of those things probably get in the way. Even when like I know the help that I would be asking for, the person would do it. It's cool. Like, of course, bro, I got you, or whatever yeah. it is. But it's mm-hmm. still like the, damn, I can do this myself. Or mm-hmm. they don't think I'm done if I ask for this help, even though it's, it's all fear shit. And probably based off shit that happened growing up, like, mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. hmm. I told you it's gonna get a little deep. No, that was good. Get that's a little good. deep. That was a good one. It's hey, ego gets in the way of everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. talking about it. But I've always struggled with uh, being vulnerable enough mm-hmm. to let people know that I don't know everything. Mm-hmm. People always did just assume because mm-hmm. the way that I carried myself, even since I was a child. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's all ego. Mm. It's gone. It's shattered. My ego's been shattered, though, mm-hmm. in yeah. the past, since, since the beginning of the year. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't have that issue anymore, but... Do you want to unpack it some more? Unpack. We got champagne. Yeah. <laughs> we got champagne. Oh, what, what? Unpack, like, kind of what shattered your ego? Um, you know, it was a situation, actually, hmm, I'm trying to think of how I want to articulate it. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a situation, there are situations in our lives when we come across people that... Um, trigger certain things, mm-hmm. and the person that I met triggered something mm-hmm. in me that made me question everything that I've ever thought that I've known mm. my entire life. Wow! And that had to change, and I like to say that I went through like an ego death, mm. sort of. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm in a different place, and I look at things in a different way because of that. Wow! That is beautiful. Yeah, that is lovely. Yeah. I mean, I don't even need to answer a question anymore. <laughs> yeah, you I'm do. Sit with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. I, mean, I want to sit with that. That was really profound. Ask the question one time. What gets in the way of you asking for help? What gets in the way of you asking for help? I think one of the things for me is, um, especially kind of as like a single parent, I, I, I want to save my ask for when I really need it. Like, I've, absor- I've exhausted every single option, so I don't want to like ask people for something when it's like, I can figure this shit out by myself. Right. As opposed to, I don't have any other options, I need you to do this thing for me. So, but mm. what ends up happening is, is because I'm trying to save it, then I never ask for help. Mm. <sighs> yeah. It's wild how like, when people, I know for sometimes when people ask me for help, I'm like, oh yeah, for sure, I got you. Yeah. But in our head, when we ask for help, we yes. think there's so many blockers, they're gonna think this is the biggest ass, right. and it's just like $20 to get some food or like, right. it'd be yeah. the smallest shit, but in our head, we build it up so much. Yeah. And we forget that when you know people ask us for help, we never, when we, when we fuck with them, it's, it's, it's reciprocal. We don't think too much about it, but we don't do that with ourselves. So we overthink it. Mm-hmm. You know what's funny? It, it's very simple. The other day, it's silly too, but it said a lot. One of my friends sent a random cash app request mm-hmm. for $8 from four of his friends. And when I saw it, I didn't even question. I just sent him the eight dollars. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like All right, Felix. something. Um, <laughs> no, it's like I just, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, yeah. no, it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. like paying my rent, money. bro. Like right. you trying to right? What's the max? Like, yes, yes. With yes. the max, eight. ten is probably okay. eight. Yeah. 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 Ten is probably okay. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to I'll send it to But he said he was just sitting around thinking, like, I want to know who of these friends are really looking out for me. Like, who knows? No, like you just. Did it and didn't even ask me any questions. So what is it? T- was it a test? So if you said, test, I ain't got it. Uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm not going to, I don't like to call people no. toxic, but that's a toxic thing to do. Yeah. But, you but know, still, people need to, the people need to work through things the way that they need to work through them. And that was him trying to figure out who's actually there for him because he's going through his own yeah. situation. But um, I thought it was interesting because I didn't question it. I just did it. Mm-hmm. And then another friend like called him and was like, I don't know why you sent me like make a made a big deal of it. Yeah. He's like, why are you making a big deal of it? It's just eight dollars, and this is something mm. I just assumed that I needed to do it. But yeah. yeah, wow. How about we go one more time around and then we can go ahead and okay for sure. For you sure. got one skip. You can skip if it's too deep. You can just you can skip it. But if you're ready for that, yeah, ready for that fire, we can, we can, we can hear it. it. Oh yeah. Fuck it. Which habits do you engage in despite negative consequences? Jesus. What impact do these behaviors have? Wait, I'm sorry. Which habits do you engage in despite negative consequences? What impact do these behaviors and consequences have on you? Damn. Pulling harsh. Give me some more to drink. Do you want to get a a, a group group skip? (laughs) A a group skip? That's a lot. What habits? 
repeat the question? Origins? Yeah, that was a lot of words. I'm going to skip Country of Origin one. for okay. that. Uh, country of Origin. <laughs> uh, Nebraska. Which habits do you engage in despite <laughs> negative consequences? What impact do these behaviors <laughs> and consequences have on you? Self-sabotage? Let's talk about Ooh. it. Okay. Self-sabotage. Yeah. Easy to talk about. So easy. Negative consequences. Things that I What habits do you engage in? in? Oh, here's something. Okay. I skipped the first thing in my head, but I, I'm, I'm going to go to the second thing. Okay, but you don't want to tell us the first? Oh, it's deep. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> well, we got time. Nah, Save no, for that. No, no, no. Save for that. <laughs> okay. Save for that. Um, uh, I keep running out of gas in my car. Metaphor? No. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but, it, but it turns into the metaphor. Okay. I keep running out of gas. Like, mm. I keep thinking I have more time mm. to do something, so I put it off. Mm. And it's translating into these moments where, like, four times the last two months, I have been partying. <laughs> Alexa, turn it off. Alright, I got it. Is it Alexa? <laughs> Google? <laughs> Siri? Who is Why that? Why did I turn it off? I want to plug it. I want to plug it. I was just lucky. Why is he playing that? I mean, <laughs> the niggas in the house. What is this? What is this? Yeah, what the hell? No, I keep running out of gas. I keep putting yeah. off certain tasks. And so what it has turned That's into wild. is like four times the last two months. When trying to go to my house to my local gas station, which is not even half a mile away, half a mile away, I run out of gas. Mm. It's also like that, like overextending your your capacity. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely. It's like definitely stretching myself too thin. Um, back to the question of like asking for help, not being able to like uh, defer and be able to. Uh, I own a lot of businesses, yeah. so being able to delegate, delegate, delegate mm -hmm. um, responsibility That's hard. in that situation. Takes it trust. Hard. It does take trust. Thing. I yeah. don't trust nothing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you gonna come back to that? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't trust. In especially, in the, especially in the work situation, I don't. I don't really trust much because I've put my life into certain work situations, so mm -hmm. then I trust people with my life. Sometimes it's a bit much, but what that turns into is, okay, I'm gonna spend another 20 minutes engaging in this. I really want to go home and get some food, but I'll get some gas tomorrow, so I'll stop. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm 30 minutes late mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. let's talk, bruh. Mm -hmm. Did you run out of gas today? I ran out of fucking yeah. gas. Yeah. So today, <laughs> gas <laughs> today. Oh, time it really came full circle. It really came full circle. Why am I late? Because I ran out of fucking gas on the way to yeah. the gas station. Yeah. What? What? Okay, I'm done. Sorry. I was about yeah, to ask a lot of questions about gas. I'll put a mental note. I'll put a mental note. Let me stop. But you know what's funny? I used to do that all the time. Really. And I ended up having to replace my fuel pump. God damn. Because you can't keep running you out of gas. can't keep doing that. Yeah. Because it's, it's not set up car. for that. Wow. But to your point, it's like, that's how I operated in my life. Yeah. All around. Like, I just kept What's putting running off. Kept putting mm. a lot of things. And also, it's like, Man, what don't you yes. have time? Like, what are you not, what time are you not prioritizing, right? Like, what are the things that you don't prioritize to make, you know? And that was the next it, question. Okay. <laughs> that was the next question today. Y'all go ahead, though. Y'all go, go ahead. Go ahead, Felix. Um, or just say you could, you could pull, pull a card. Okay. I was going to say, let me, can, I just have a little story. Story time is cool. Yeah, so it, it's, it's funny. It's, it's like, because you mentioned the gas, running out of gas, and like mm -hmm. how it, it's like a trickle thing. Like one thing, you do one thing over and over, mm -hmm. and then it trickles on to something else. Yeah. And it's like life will, the universe, or however you want to say it, will always keep putting this stuff in like, mm -hmm. Domino effect. Mm -hmm. There's one time, I'll make this as quick as possible. I cheated mm -hmm. on the person I was with. Mm -hmm. I because I cheated, I was late for something, and I was speeding, and I got a speeding ticket. Mm -hmm. And then months later, my license got suspended because mm -hmm. I didn't pay the speeding ticket because I didn't remember it. And then I mean, it just, just like, it, went on for, it, on it went on for a year, like God. thing after thing after oh. thing after thing, and it all went back to that, so that one cheating. night. Did it remind? And did it keep reminding you oh, after absolutely. everything? Yeah, I'll never cheat again. I'll yeah. Set up. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got cheat to and get your license revoked. <laughs> right. That's how, that's how it happens. That's how it works. It hurt you one way or the other. You Goodness. can't drive anymore. You can't drive Virginia, cheat no more. Virginia, too. In Virginia, oh, yeah. you can get locked up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they got some wild traffic laws. Like, if you go over a certain amount of miles per hour, 15. it can be it's considered like a... Uh, misdemeanor or oh misdemeanor? Yep. misdemeanor? Yep. And then, like, even on some other shit, apparently, I'm sure they don't enforce it. They probably can't enforce it. Mm -hmm. Apparently, any sexual position outside of missionary is considered mm -hmm. illegal. 
Yes. In Virginia. Also, cursing on so the telephone. So if you had sex in Virginia and you weren't doing missionary, yeah. you, you would probably so, have been locked up immediately. <laughs> 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 you were going to jail. Yeah. 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 That's wild. But have I had sex in Virginia? In Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. Which part of Virginia? Which part of Virginia? Which part of Virginia? Virginia? Yeah. And you weren't in missionary. You were doing some illegal shit. Commonwealth yeah. laws. Wow. Look oh. at the way it's patriarchy manifests itself, right? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Missionary. Yes. Don't, missionary. Don't be giving Not up even positions. Not even can't even go both ways. Just no. missionary. Damn. Mm. You would think maybe doggy style. but They want to maybe encourage intimacy and face. I don't know. Maybe. I just want to lock niggas up. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay. What does paradise look like to you? Oh, man. Mm. That's beautiful. Paradise. I just hear the LL Cool J song. That paradise, paradise is very nice, right? Very yes. nice. <laughs> they lick my lips <laughs> in the waterfalls. <laughs> Is that what the Amory? Amory? Yeah. 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 305. Hey, let's dogs, go. Yeah. Yeah. Come let's on, one thing. What does Paris, Paradise look like? I don't know. I think the perfect day for me is wake up late, smoke, maybe engage in some sexual activities yes. if I'm with a partner. Yes. Just like really ease into the day. Yeah. Maybe do some reading, work out, like just doing things that I feel good. Maybe do a little bit of work, but just mm -hmm. doing shit that makes me feel good. I don't know destination wise, but like as far as a day, that's like paradise, the perfect day. Mm -hmm. um, just being around people, having good conversation. So. Yeah. I got to create, definitely create pieces of that within my week and my day and like, you know, really be present in those moments. So it's not mm -hmm. like paradise is a, you know, a once every blue moon. It's like I can kind of create that shit within mm -hmm. normal day of mm -hmm. the highs and lows and the run out of gas. I'm like, okay, let me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. try to find it, create that. So that's what mm -hmm. it looks like at this moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. I like that too. I mean, paradise for me is. It used to be like, oh, the perfect place to go. Yeah. But now it's like any day, any moment where there's no expectations mm -hmm. and no obligations, <laughs> that's paradise. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's all I need. Nobody asking for you, you for nothing. Nope. Yeah. My paradise is the exact opposite of that. It's people asking me for stuff. Um, um, completing tasks, mm -hmm. labor. Mm -hmm. All so you checking these boxes, Nemo? Yeah, like, like, like legit. Like, like, when you said paradise, it was kind of weird that my first thought was like, work? top floor executive overlooking the city, work till three, go home, pick up my kids. I don't even got kids. Go home, pick up my kids, <laughs> chill, smoke a blunt with the wife, go to bed, 9.30, wake up, do it again. That was my, my paradise still infuses work and labor and capitalism into it. But those are the things that I'm passionate about, so. Hmm. And it involves other people too. It does. It does. Like, it, oh, yeah. I'll stop there. Yeah. Interesting. Pour in so I can pour back out. You know what I mean? I'm an investor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think for me, I, I think about paradise, and I hate to be this person, but I think about paradise as a moment in which I'm not encumbered by money. Mm. Um, or could you imagine, like, paradise also is like a world that is, that is centered with blackness. Like, I don't like to center whiteness first. Like, I don't want to work without white supremacy. Like, fuck that shit. Like, could you imagine a world where blackness is exalted is every beautiful. day? Right. <clears throat> that would be fucking paradise. You know? For me. I feel like that's a really good segue. Mm. Talking about love, talking about vulnerability today on this podcast, this episode. <laughs> sure. You know, we got this icebreaker transition <laughs> into the main show. How we feeling? How we feeling? I feel broke. Ice broken. Ice, ice broken? Ice, ice broken. broken. I like that. I like that. Not broken. This is what we get in our deep love vulnerability bag. See how deep we can get into our emotions. However we feel, whatever comes to mind, if you feel comfortable expressing it, get into it. I think I was excited to have this conversation because when we talk about patriarchy, um, it requires us to do a lot of things. To be the protective provider requires us to silence our emotions, silence our feelings, silence our true livelihood. But one thing it doesn't require us to do is love. So like one thing I was really trying to be intentional about is, you know, what would it look like if love was a requirement for black men? What would it look like if love was a requirement for black boys? Like, so I know for me, I, I want to be as full as I can while I'm here on this earth. Yeah. And I think for me, it starts with how vulnerable can I be with myself first? And I think if I'm able to be that and embody that, then I can start embodying a better kind of love. Because if I can just bear all that shit with myself, then I can start to give it to other people. Yeah. So before we even talk about this love talk, before we get in our, our love bag, 
are y'all good at vulnerability? Like, are y'all good at that shit? Like, do y'all like being vulnerable? Like, I know we talk about how important it is, but like, if we really got get down into it, are y'all good at it? Y'all like it? Like, what's up? Am I good at it? And you don't I, have to take it in the, the good, you know, no, that's literal. Cool. The I am a developing professional. Okay. In the sense, I, I have uh, learned to love vulnerability, especially with um, my romantic partner, but now that is extending towards my friendships now. Mm -hmm. um, asking things of my friends to hold space for me in that emotional space and being honest. And I'm friends with like nigga niggas, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, what do they call them? Um, cisgendered males, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's us. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's us. Us. yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Uh, um, and so asking that of them and then expecting that and then following up with that. Uh, has allowed me to be, you know, not only more vulnerable with myself, but also more vulnerable within those conversations. So, um, I guess in order to start being vulnerable with other people, I had to start with myself, which includes, you know, journaling and um, self-reflections, meditations, and things of that nature. <clears throat> also, podcasting, strangely yeah. enough, is a is a is a way to like express that vulnerability and get it out. Because when you got to talk for an hour, you know, you end up saying some things about yourself for real, for real. So, um, yeah. I feel Am like I that's, good at it? Yeah. Nah, we'll see. I'm mean, interested you mentioned podcasts. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's like a reason subtly why like so many of us as men have started podcasts because we want the space to talk about some shit. And it's just like, where do we have it? So why not start a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> so just an interesting thought that came to mind. Like, you go, go ahead. Whoever wants to start like vulnerability, you like it, you don't like it. I think it it definitely is a very helpful practice, but at the same time, it's it's hard to embrace. Mm -hmm. It is, and it's, it's scary in, in regards to being vulnerable with people. Mm. Um, I think we often look at it like, oh, if you open yourself up too much to somebody, they're gonna take advantage of you. Yeah. And we can't be afraid of that because you'll never be able to experience receiving love mm -hmm. if you're not open. Um, I actually read something, because I, I was in this situation before. I've been in many situations where I, my friends are like, why are you being so open? Why are you being so vulnerable when you're dating? When you're talking to these people, like, why just tell them everything? Mm. And I'm going through this whole thing thinking, like, am I being too needy? Mm. But I read something, it was in Psychology Today, this, this doctor was talking about this, the difference between vulnerability and neediness. Mm -hmm. And being vulnerable is expressing your thoughts and feelings without expecting anything in return. Mm -hmm. Being needy is when you're expressing it because you want a reaction. Mm -hmm. And once I read that, it made me look at every way that I've dealt with people in a completely different way. Mm -hmm. So I realized I wasn't needy. I've always been vulnerable. Because mm -hmm. when you're vulnerable, you do it, number one, for yourself. Because right. like, there's the Audrey Lorde quote, and I'm not going to try to butcher it, but basically, you know, she said something along the lines of, I have come to believe that what is the most important to me must be shared, spoken, and named, regardless of if it's misunderstood or you're taken the wrong way. Like, you do it for yourself. Because you know that it, it feeds you and, you know, pours into you. And again, easier said than done. It is not like a, I'm going to be vulnerable today. Let me turn my vulnerable switch on. It's not that easy. And I think, because of course, we've been conditioned not to be that. So it's a lot of unworking. Um, but I know for me, like to that point, it's because you do it because I know I will, even though it's awkward and hard, it's gonna make me feel better at the end of the day mm -hmm. and if I can express this with somebody, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think as a, as a, as a father of, of two black sons, seven and 11, no matter what I tell them, right, in terms of life, they're not gonna learn by just what I say, right? My sons are gonna learn by the clarity of my example. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about vulnerability as a dad, as an educator, I wanna ensure that it's not just me talking about be vulnerable, it's about me demonstrating for me my understanding to my deepest core of what vulnerability is so that people will have an invitation then to come talk to me, to show up in other places as vulnerable. And I, don't think, and I think that it looks different for everybody, but I think that by exemplifying what vulnerability means, it lets people know that not only is it okay, but that you still are whole, that you still are seen, that you still are worthy, even when you are vulnerable. Because I think so many times we have that attachment to like, people are gonna think I'm weak, people are gonna think that I'm not strong or that I'm imperfect. And it's like, in showing up in vulnerability for me, it's about like, I can be this person and I'm still whole, I'm still entire and I'm still worthy. And sometimes it's even realizing that like, okay, maybe there was a moment to be vulnerable and I didn't take it and that's okay. Like, I think there's so many, I know for me, I often put the pressure on myself because I've been home, back home for the past year, you know, reconnecting with family, uh, spending time with mom and dad, um, and really trying to cherish these moments. And even when you have those moments when it's quote unquote time to be vulnerable, you're like, 
I can really say some vulnerable shit, but nigga, I'm scared. <laughs> I will blow up this spot right now if like, I say this thing. And it's like, oh, it's okay to have those moments where it's like, you're on the, the edge of being vulnerable and maybe you're not ready. Maybe you just don't have it. You don't have, you don't have the words. And you didn't say anything. And I think, I know for me, it's been important to hold that space too. Like, yeah, I could have been vulnerable there, but I wasn't and that's okay. Like, I'm not gonna beat myself up about it. And I think we come back to patriarchy. That's what it tells you to do. So even if you do all this vulnerable shit, it's like, you weren't the most vulnerable you could be today. We're gonna take you down the notch on what this manhood shit. And it's like, it's okay if you don't. Like, right. some days I ain't got it, some days I don't wanna share. Right. right. Yeah. I know it definitely helps me to, to share. It makes me feel whole, like you said, but the days I ain't got it, I just ain't, I ain't got it. Right. And holding space for that. For those who don't know, BMO, master of ceremonies, MC, yeah. personality <laughs> for days. So how do you manage, like, wanting to be your full self, but you still have this public image, this MC, this master, like, that's your full self too. How do you manage like how much you show, how much you give to people, but still maintaining like your, you know, everybody wants to have their box that they don't show and that's fine. How do you maintain that balance? That's a great question. I think in some ways, if we're on, man, that's actually a question of COVID to be honest with you. Cause yeah. in the, in the pre COVID times when you would perform on stage, you're on stage. So there isn't much room or time for you to be vulnerable. You're definitely performing uh, a version of yourself to, to do a task. Now that, you know, COVID has happened, the lady and I, uh, my partner and I, we live together, we have a podcast together. It's in the morning, it's a morning show. That conversation, when we're doing that public conversation, is 100% vulnerable sometimes uncomfortably so, uh, especially because we're having a conversation between man and woman. Um, and so sometimes the conversation goes places that I wouldn't expect uh, to reveal publicly, but I feel like one of the purposes of my shows is to be wrong, to be vulnerable, and then to evolve in public so that we can see that space, so that we don't have to be uh, tied down to this image of perfection equals respect. You can be imperfect and you can still be respected. You can still grow. You can still be a great man, et cetera. So to answer your question directly, like in some situations, like, yeah, you're going to get me. If you tune into the show, it's that's Talk about me it. and the lady. Wake like, and bake with me, Mo. Talk yeah, about you, it. yeah, when you come on to Wake and Bake with me, Mo, you're getting me. It's 100% me and my lady. But I guess, do you ever find it? Because I know if, even if let's talk for a shit, I'm just yeah. like, how much do I actually share? Because, you know, you, you, you the visibility. Once the filter is off, it's yeah. off for me. Okay. I'm, I don't know if I'm a Sith Lord in that way, but like, I think in extremes, like if I'm going to be right. vulnerable, if That's, I'm asking my lady a question on the show and I, she wants an answer from me, I'm going to give her the same thing that I would have gave her behind stage. Now, for her, sometimes that is a little bit conflicting mm -hmm. um, to see me be vulnerable with other people in that space. It feels like it um, takes away from an exclusive moment that I have with her, in which then we have to have a vulnerable moment about what it is to be vulnerable with other people. Right. So on that end, then it gets to you know what I'm saying, we get, a little, we get a little shaky and the conversations get a little interesting. But on the public facing end, once the filter is off, like I'm, I'm here, do you, can you do that? Can you uh, sub-filter the filter? It's tough, I think there's like a, because there's always things I'm, I'm thinking a lot. Mm -hmm. I am an overthinker. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, there's certain things that I am definitely comfortable sharing. You ask me, I'm a, I'm a share, but there's things that I haven't necessarily worked through yet mm -hmm. that for me, I might put the filter on. Okay. And that's just kind of just how I roll in terms of, I need to be able to be, you know, okay with this truth first. Mm -hmm. So maybe I work out in therapy first before I share it. Mm -hmm. And that's just been my process. I think in more real life conversations, like one on one, like, you know, talking to homies, then like there's no filter. Right. But I think sometimes the public or whatever, the, the cameras, it's like, let me, I want to make sure that I am number one, speaking my truth and also that I feel good about what this truth is, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. It's like, I don't want to present something that's like, I look back and I'm like, I don't even think I believe that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think I even met that. <laughs> so, yeah. You mentioned the pandemic. Um, I'm curious, I think a lot of folks, we, we've like, we talk about boundaries during the pandemic, talk about vulnerability. Have your like vulnerability or being able to be vulnerable changed during the pandemic? Like in terms of just like being at the crib? <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, again, me and my lady, we live together. We live together for two years now. <clears throat> 
it's impossible over two in to we lived together for two years the pandemic was like what 370 days when we were in still that happened. intense it was still happening still happening Delta, still, 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 Delta, Delta, Delta is real still yeah streets. Delta just showed up as, our, as we filled out our questionnaire on the way in oh yeah we yeah. safe with um, it we safe with it yes. with the lockdown Sanitized though down. with the lockdown it it kind of forced me to be because who else I was going to talk to even if I'm on the phone with my mom even if I'm on the phone with my mans who's sitting next to me we're in a one bedroom apartment it's like 800 square feet so if I'm vulnerable to my man's on the phone, I'm... Uh, my proxy vulnerable to her. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So why not just be vulnerable to her? Yeah. And so what it, learned, what, it, what it kind of taught me in the pandemic, uh, to your point that you were making earlier, Nick, was sometimes I don't have it. Sometimes I'm not prepared to just bear my soul. But when I am, I do. Yeah. Uh, and what we and my lady have uh, uh, communicated is that <clears throat> that might not look like flowery. It might not look good. It might look like it's still in development, what that looks like. It might come in like long burst conversation, but it's coming. Yeah. And then how can we then align on how we can, you know, attach this vulnerability to love and how we move forward? I think the pandemic, and I'm definitely curious for y'all too on this, has, like, like Bimo said, forced me to sit with my thoughts and forced me to sit down and journal and like actually process, okay, why do I believe this thing? Why do I have this thought? Yeah. And then I know if I can actually be okay with some of these anxieties, these fears, and know that it's okay to have this fear. And I've already sat and processed it for myself and know that, oh, okay, I am a little anxious around, you know, what this may look like on a, a first date situation. That, that gives me some, some butterflies, whatever, the, whatever it is, whatever it looks like. Um, so we're kind of talking about vulnerability. And I think to be vulnerable is an act of self-love. So I'm wondering, like, what's y'all self-love game like? Like, it talked about the boundaries. Yeah talked about but like what what does that what does that look like like if we talk about love being a requirement you know for us talking about black boys two sons yeah. what does self-love look like <laughs> yes we want to know bring that out come yeah. on because you laughed so we <laughs> laughed you know that's you should no about. i'm i am i am <clears throat> i told y'all before i love labor so it's like 15 16 hour days Easy. Jesus Christ. Easy. It's right. like easy. Fun. Fun to me, right? What's the lo- where's the love in that for you? Where's the love like in where, that? Where, is the, where are you being loved in that? Where am I being loved yeah, in the 15 to 16 hours? In, yes. those, in those times? Yeah. Um, producing. Okay. Generating. Ideating. Doing following through. Love. Doing, doing what, what I love, love. Like genuinely. And I like to do a lot of things. So then it just comes into until we have the uh, infrastructure to be able to continue to staff out and do things. For now, it's 15, 16 hours. Um, But the self-love is not in the 15, 16 hours. The self-love is in the boundaries that I put when I'm not doing those things. It's uh, usually, let's say Monday through Friday, you can call me anytime, answer for anything. We can sit on the conversation, brainstorm, et cetera, et cetera. Pull up to my office, I'll write a report and listen to you and consult you at the same time. But when that shit is off, it's off. The phone is not in the room. The iPad is not up. The laptop is closed. Mm -hmm. You can call me, sure. And I will gladly call you tomorrow and say, here's where I was. This is what I was doing. Sundays, BMO is closed. There's only Bryant Brown there. And you can't call Bryant Brown. He don't got no phone number. Solid Brown. That's the... Bryant Brown with the boundaries. With the boundaries. You You keep that one. It's got to be. It's like it has to be if I'm going to, if I'm developing a life where in which I am, you know, pouring into people, investing into people, and then having those communication lines at the same time, when I'm telling them you can communicate to me at any time until here. Mm -hmm. Because the boundary is you simply teaching people how to treat you. Exactly. And then in that time, then I can focus on myself. Then I can do the meditation. I can spend time with the lady. I can go to the movies. I can watch whatever show I want to watch. I can participate in the self-love activities that that I am learning still to do, but I have to give my time have to give myself time to do that. And it's like, am I speaking up for myself? Am I honoring these boundaries? Have to. Am I saying no? Yeah. Am I not just reflexively saying yes? I know I'll, I'll do that shit. Like, oh yeah, I got you. And I'm like, I didn't want to get this person. Right. I didn't want to got you. And then I kick myself later because I agreed to something that wasn't really serving me. Right. What about y'all like self love? So I, I think it, it looks different for all of us. Mm-hmm. And I think we don't, Number one, we don't have enough like moments of actually talking about how we love ourselves. Let mm-hmm. me not mess up the mic, sorry, Ben. <laughs> uh, how we love ourselves, and then also like how we want to be loved. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious, do we do we even have to figure that out to figure out how we want to be loved? Like, do we have to figure out how I love myself to be to, in order to have somebody love me? 
it's things that I've been asking myself lately, like, you know, post breakup, being single now, like figuring out what actually feels good to me. Like, you know, mm -hmm. even though relationship was great, broke up on good terms, but like, how do I want to love myself in this moment? Because mm -hmm. it's like, it's like a re figuring out like, okay, I'm, I'm new out here now. Like, this is a new The DMs version. are open, y'all. The DMs are open. <laughs> the DMs. He, he said that, not me. You see the yellow. <laughs> you see the yellow. <laughs> Drop that social media handle right there, y'all. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> not with that. Blowing up the spot. But, uh, yeah. but I think for me, like, really coming back to, like, how I want to be loved, how I want to show up with other people, how I want to show up with myself. I know for myself, like, in terms of how I want to be loved, it's really hard to, like, communicate that mm. so I think it's like when you ask for to think about asking for help mm -hmm. asking for love is a whole nother level <laughs> it's not even it's not even asking for help it's asking how you want somebody to like show up support care and that takes going back to vulnerability a whole lot of like mm -hmm. how will this be perceived how will this yeah. come across so I think that asking for it even if I know what it is it's like that next step of like commitment trust yeah. um, kind of surrendering a piece of myself in that moment and giving it to this person, yeah, yeah. that shit is hard as fuck. Yeah. So I think yeah. that that's a big piece of just like, even when I know what I want, asking for it is a whole nother journey. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I love my words of affirmation. I love my affection, physical touch, mm. love languages. Um, and I think even sitting with myself and realizing that, okay, I love my alone time. I love my own quality time with myself. Like I love that solo time. I love, you know, talking about physical touch, loving on myself, self-love. We had the sex episode coming soon. So talking about masturbation a lot, necessary. So like all those things are important for my self-love to feel good. Yeah. Um, I just know for me, I struggle with the, okay, now that I know how to love myself, now I gotta ask for it. Now, how do I articulate that? Now I gotta else. articulate that. Yeah. yeah. So I guess how do y'all navigate that? Now I know what this self-love journey looks like, or maybe you're figuring it out. Hmm. Pandemic has put us in the crib all year. You know, you're in a relationship. I think mm -hmm. all of us are single. Like, how do you then go about asking for that love that you want? Well, you know, I've been single for 12 years now. Can we define single? Just for the people out in the streets. Talking, <laughs> dating, not, single? Not, talking commi about? not committed. Not committed. Not to committed. another person. I hear you. Yeah. So I've been in that space for 12 years yeah. because I know exactly how I want to be loved, mm -hmm. and I have no problem articulating that. What does that look like? Yeah. What is, wh how do I want to be loved? Yeah. Um, I guess in a nutshell, I, I want to receive what I'm offering. Mm -hmm. So I'm giving you time and space, and I'm giving you communication. I want all of those things back. I want us to support each other and yeah. growing together and attacking the world together. I want us to be in a partnership yeah. first before anything else mm -hmm. and have a solid foundation of friendship mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, mm -hmm. I have like a long, I've written a passage about I, it. iPhone list. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. that's born. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's beautiful. Um, it's all manifestation because yeah, when you ask for it, you get it. We well, have none because you ask not, right? So we exactly. want to ask for what we want exactly. and expect that. Yeah. So in that period, when I articulate those things, most people are not willing to show up for that. And that's okay. I'm fine with that. Isn't it hard? Has it ever been hard? Maybe it's my own projection shit. I gotta watch myself. Is it hard to like be on the precipice or talking to somebody and it's like, oh, this person's feeling me. This person's eyeing me, but I know this ain't really what is for me. Cause you know what you want. It's like, wait, it's, it, it's shiny. They fine as hell. How do you turn that down? You said talking about 12 years. How do you turn it down when it's like, it looks good, it sounds good. They talking that talk. They saying what you want to hear or what you think you want to hear. How do you figure that? Like, okay, my self love says, nah. How do you navigate that? Cause that shit is, they be in your DMs, feelings. I know they, they are. are. Yeah. I know they we know. And look at his face. Right. We know. He, he denied, didn't deny it. it. He didn't deny uh, it, y'all. <laughs> you know what? I think it's really, it really boils down to, cause at the beginning it was hard, mm -hmm. but I'd say probably in the past five years and more so in the past year, it's more so about what's important in my life. Is it being with another person? Is it sharing my life with another person? Or is it being my best, complete, whole self? Which one? Mm -hmm. But it's, why not both? Not that both aren't possible, mm -hmm. but the priority is never going to be a connection person. with another person. Always you. That's something that I would like to have. Yeah. So if I'm not going to so have what do, that. So what, what do you say when people say, oh, Felix is selfish? 
I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think self-love is putting yourself first mm -hmm. and figuring out how that plays out mm -hmm. from that point. But if you can't put yourself first, you're not loving yourself. Do y'all have a definition for love? Like if you were to say what love is, I feel like that, I mean, Nick has one of the greatest books, shout out to Bell Hooks, all about love over there, taking copious notes. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the things I appreciate about that book is early on, Bell Hooks references the definition of how she defines love. And it's, again, my memory isn't, isn't the best, but like an action, an intentional action to commit to somebody else's well-being mm -hmm. and not what your projection of what they need, but really understanding what they need and how can you pour into that. And once I read that definition, I was like, oh, okay, it's a choice. I choose to love this person. I choose to love, you know, of course, it seems weird, you know, talking about parents or family, but like I need to, it's an it's a action that I'm intentionally choosing to do versus yeah. just like this very vague, like you just fall in love one day and you just wake up and it's like, and to me, that shit never resonated with me. Like, I, I don't think I ever sat up and said, I think I just fell in love. Like, nah, I, I, ch I chose to be with, I chose to be with her. I chose to be with her. Like, it was, it was a decision. It wasn't just like I woke up and said, oh, I think I love this person today. It's like, no, I committed to it. And I think that language helped me look at love as a, as a decision, as a choice, as a commitment versus it's just a feeling. I'm like, I don't, I can't, to, for me, I could never rock with that. So do y'all have any kind of basis? Felix, you smiling. I'm gonna go no, for you first. No, because I've, I've read that, I've read it recently. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I found it interesting that she does talk about love being an action. Mm -hmm. And she also mentions that what you're speaking of, like that feeling, I can't remember the word she used. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a word that she used. Cathexis or something. Something like yeah. that. Yeah, y'all can Google a, it. We'll put it up on the screen. <laughs> you f having a feeling a, with the connection with another person. Yeah. But the love is when you actually make a decision. Huh? Yeah. yeah. You think you you in thought right now? Well, okay. Because I've always bring I've, it to us. Bring it I to would us. agree with that when it comes to your romantics and your friends. Mm -hmm. I had never thought about choosing to love my mother though. And that she talks about that too. Because you think it's innate, and, you, and it, to a degree right, it right. is, this woman birthed us. Right. Uh, but at the same time, over time, you are choosing to go to lunch with your mom, exactly. choosing to be exactly. like, you know, you're sharing things with, with her, whatever other family members. Like it's a actions over time. It doesn't seem like a choice, but that it is. You want to show up for your people. Like, it's true. It's true. you know, blood family, chosen family, you want to yeah. show up for those people. Yeah. And that's a repeated choice. Yeah. And if you don't, if you're not doing it, people might call you out because this is like our agreement. We've chosen to be brothers, family, whatever. True. And you're not showing up for me. You're not being loving. You're not True. doing that commitment. So I think that really changed everything in terms of how I thought about love. I'm like, oh, it doesn't have to be this thing where I just wake up or, you know, hits me in, in you know, 2 a.m. It's like, no, nah, I, I decided to do that. Yeah. I decided to love myself better during the pandemic than I was before. Yeah. That was a choice.